Good day to you one and all. It is I, Justin Hawkins, and this is Justin Hawkins Rides Again. My hair's wet because I've just had a soothing bath after a long flight home from Los Angeles in California, um, and I'm ready to react to some uh, music stuff. The first thing I'm going to do is this one, Ian Brown, live. Um, Ian Brown fans have shared their anger after the Stone Roses singer played his sold-out Leeds gig on September the 25th with no band, no band whatsoever. Just Ian Brown, the man. Justin Hawkins rides again. Again. Anyway, who needs guitars? So, um, a fan tweeted about the uh, Ian Brown thing. I'm gutted to see Ian Brown turn up to this to his forty pounder ticket sold out gig at Leeds tonight with no band. <laughs> yes. I can't stress that enough. There was no band. I'm a lifelong fan, but it was bad. Ian Brown does karaoke and butchers his own tunes. Most were too pissed to care, but I had to get out after this one. Um, another angry fan wrote, anyone who has Ian Brown's tickets uh, for the tour, sell them now. Talk about desecrating the memory of the Stone Roses. He's just, he's just done it one evening. Uh, others, meanwhile, defended the performance with one writing... Top night in Leeds, thanks to Ian Brown. Ignore the Twitter wankers. I was there and I saw a sold-out show full of people on their feet enjoying every minute. The amount of people who are on their feet is obviously an indicator that something's going right, I think, unless they're walking towards the exit or the bar. na 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 um, he's got that technique where he I'll try and demonstrate it on this uh, this is the microphone I use for the acoustic he does this one na, 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 na. I'm not sure what that does it sort of your, your hand shrouds the capsule and it changes the tonality of the singing not always in a nice way but it's good if uh, I like it when I'm doing sort of something a bit spoken wordy it makes it sort of just makes it really loud somehow <laughs> To which I replied, chopped in half! You know, that sort of thing you can do. Um, it adds a certain aggression to it. But uh, he's just going like this. Na, 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 na. Not that there's anything wrong with that. I mean, it's, it's his uh, gig, you know. You know, actually listening to that backing track, I mean, it is, it is an electronic thing, isn't it? But, you know, when you see the Sleaford Mods, for example, um, most of the time there's a fella who operates the um, laptop, which doesn't always need a lot of operation. It might just be as simple as pressing the space bar and then holding a pint. But he hasn't even got that. So the person who's operating the laptop is faceless, um, anonymous, backstage somewhere behind the setting um actually which looks quite nice really i mean it's the set has these sort of i used to have them in my in my set here on the uh, youtube they're, they're led strips really um you see them a lot in um, modern productions it's a it's a really in, inexpensive way of um making it look a bit fancy i mean no expense spared no expense spent i think on this oh, you could argue there's a bit of a cash in i suppose i mean no band it's probably you could probably do this gig in a 1967 reliant regal and um, perhaps my producer would like to superimpose a picture of the classic um fiberglass bodied freewheeled vehicle just you just need a tiny you get one of those Piaginini, what they called the the little vans with one one wheel at the front, that could be a tour bus on a on a gig like this because it's just some LED strips, um, a laptop, um, and a microphone. One laptop and a microphone. No 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 no! This is costing forty quid. Good value. But I'd like to know what venue this is. Oh, it's the O2 Academy. Edinburgh? 
How big is that place now? Let me just do some research. It holds 3,000 people. Right, I've got the calculator out. So, 3,000 people times 40 pounds per ticket. That's 120,000 pounds. Um, okay, I'm just going to do a little Google search for an LED, LED cylinder. Okay, let's be generous, about 50 quid. Um, he's got, probably got like five on each side. So let's say that's, let's say that's 10. So he's got 500 quid. So um, let's go back to the calculator. 120,000 minus 500. And then you've got to take his petrol off to get there in the Reliant Regal. It's probably a little bit juicy by today's standards. So I think if he had to get from Leeds to Edinburgh, let's, let's call that... A hundred pounds in petrol. Oh, and the microphone. It might be a Shaw wireless microphone. Let's have a look. Yeah, they could be expensive. That might be like 700 quid, say, just for a really, really good one. So let's take 700 quid off there as well. So he's looking to clear 118,700 pounds for this night if he bought all new equipment. You know, he will have had to fed himself. So let's, let's say Nando's. Let's say he spent 15 quid in Nando's if he if he did this if he fed him and his whole crew which for a is probably going to be a sound man who also erects the lights so let's 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 take the sound man let, let's let's be generous and say that it's it's a good sound man um and so that's five four hundred quid say and then minus 15 pounds for the for the um, nando's meal they can sleep in the van if they sleep in the van they're clearing 118,285 pounds the good thing is the band or the lack thereof sounds exactly how you would hope it does you know you're not uh, at the the mercy of you know variables such as a broken string you know or an amp breaking down it hasn't even got any amps so just Nothing could possibly go wrong. You might you might upset a few people with it being a little bit half assed seeming, but uh, you know. Home, yeah. The, the trouble is, I find it hard to be upset with Ian Brown. He is a legend, and of course, he's nutty. That's that's his whole vibe, isn't it? That's a really cool bit. There was a, there was a pick slide. You know, one of these ones. I'll do it with my fingernails, but... And he gesticulated in the air uh, to, to demonstrate what was happening there. You don't need a guitarist when you've got a singer that does that. Interesting that uh, as he goes there, uh, I'm at war with all these posers and these frauds. <laughs> While singing along to a backing track. Oh, the irony. I think this is more of a sort of meet and greet. There's a lot of people there filming it and stuff. They've got the cameras out. And they're obviously looking to document this moment. So not everybody there is having a shitty time. It's not that different to what a DJ does. You know, there's ones that sort of pretend to be doing stuff when they're fiddling the knobs. When I DJ, I'm actually doing stuff, so it doesn't count. You know, that's not, <laughs> that's not what I do. Um, <clears throat> but some of them are just uh, pretending. But at least to Ian Brown's credit, he's not even pretending. He's just running on the spot, really, singing along to his own songs. Nice work if you can get it. The thing about this is it takes balls of steel to actually do that to your audience. I don't know how he's got the courage to, to try and get away with this, actually. It's, um, it's immense. I, I kind of respect it in a way. I feel sorry for his audience, but uh, oh, that's what the internet's for, isn't it? Now we know. 
I mean, Ian Brown has never been, you know, your vocalist's vocalist in the in the sense that he's he's not sort of renowned for having an amazing sense of pitch and and um, power in his voice or anything. But it, but it, his whole vibe is like his presence and and he's a vibe machine, isn't he? He's the, he's the vibe man. He's basically Sean Ryder and. Bez all rolled into one, which is handy because you've only got two seats in a Reliant Regal and um, his tour manager stroke um, lighting engineer um, stroke sound engineer would have to sit in the passenger seat or more likely he'll be driving while uh, Ian Brown reads the maps because those old 67 Regals wouldn't have had a sat nav system. It was way before that. It being 1967 and all. You could do it in a Reliant Robin van, couldn't you? Just like yellow and then on the side it could just say Ian Brown's Ian Brown sings the hits on the side. But people are singing along. They're just aware that they're not going to get their money back. He showed up. He's there. He's Ian Brown is there singing. That's what he paid for. This is a little bit like that Corey Feldman thing in that I, I would probably go to this because it would be a laugh. Um, I'd try and get on the guest list though, which after this episode might not be as easy. Maybe I'll try and get on the guest list before I post this video. Yeah, that's what I'll do because it would be a right laugh. But you can't really bill it as a gig. It's more an evening with Ian Brown and his karaoke machine. First world problems. There's a lot of equipment over there on the side stage, which presumably is the support band's gear. <laughs> they've got way more than the, the main attraction, and they've had to tuck it all the way there. But um, they ought to put a black drape over that, really. It would, it would help absorb some of the sound coming from the stage and also dull the pain of realising that the main attraction didn't even bother to bring any other musicians with him. Which, to me, just suggests that even for Ian Brown, it's not about the music. Okay, I'm four and a half minutes in, and I can take nay more. I've seen enough. I think what we're seeing here is the fact that uh, Ian Brown, an Ian Brown gig isn't about the music. It's it's him. It's just him as a person, his dance moves, his trademark singing voice, um, and nothing else. I mean, literally nothing else. Minimalist. I like it. Justin Hawkins rides again. Again. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, watch one of these two videos, and uh, keep coming back. Nice one.